We have 2,000 watts of solar. We have 10,000 watts of lithium battery. We have a 3,000 watts inverter, a 70 amps MPPT charger and battery charger in one. <sighs> Want to know more? Then stick around. It's amazing to be parked in the middle of the forest, but for solar panels it's not so good. We barely charge anything. So for the solar panels, we prefer the open space. And sometimes, when we're really desperate to charge our batteries, we go to places like this. We have built a system to be we have built a system to be able to be completely off grid. As you can see, we didn't really succeed it, but there's more to it. Most quote unquote normal campers don't have an off grid system, and why should they? If you're staying in places like this anyway, you can just as well pick up a cable like that for a few bucks. In our opinion, it only makes sense to have an off grid system, which is expensive, if well you're planning to stay off grid. While we are here, in the midst of the van life pioneers, let's talk about our electrical system. How we use it and if we're actually able to be off-grid. So let's start with the batteries. We bought lithium batteries from a brand called SOK. You can check them out on the internet, they have really good reviews. But to be honest, we were a bit scared to send four and a half grand to a Chinese person named Esther. But they arrived on time exactly when they said they would. We chose to have 12 volt batteries in series and parallel to have a total of 24 volts, 406 amps. For us it seemed logical to have a 24 volt system because the trucks electrical system is also 24 volts. To put it in perspective, we have an average consumption now of around 2000 watts per day. So in theory, we could go five days without charging. But of course, we do charge. We've put six times 345 watts of solar panels on the roof, resulting in a total of about 2000 watts. However, unfortunately, this doesn't mean it's actually charging at that rate. The best we've got so far was 1200 watts. In the last 90 days our panels provided a total of 320 kilowatts. Divide that by those 90 days and we have an average of three and a half thousand watts per day. Not bad with an average consumption of 2000 watts per day. However, winter is yet to come and we already see a decline in the total yield. In between the bunch of solar panels and the fat batteries, there is an MPPT charger, a battery charger and an inverter in one. That's the blue Victron thing over there. Like most items I go over, uh, you'll find them in the description down below. We try to get as many appliances in this van in 24 volts because for us, well that's most efficient because our battery bank is 24 volts. However, we bought a lot secondhand and just in general not all appliances go in 24 volts. A lot of them go in 12 volts. That's why we have a converter which takes the 24 volts, converts it into 12 volts. Also for this just one product we have, the smart home hub, we have a converter that takes the 24 volts and converts it in 19 volts. Yeah. However, we did manage to get all the things that are continuously running, like the fridge, the water pump, these sort of things, the ventilator, uh, to have them on DC and not AC. So now and then we can leave the inverter off to save a little bit of energy, which is a good thing when you want to be off grid. There is a reoccurring theme going on in our electrical system. Every time we add an electrical component, it goes through an appropriate hard switch and an appropriate fuse. And all appliances added from there also have their own appropriate fuse. The wiring diagram and the calculators for the fuse and wire size that Far Out Ride provides helped us a lot here. There's a link to them in the description. In the beginning of the video I told you we have an average of around 2000 watts per day. Here is an autumn day of electrical consumption for you to get a better idea of what that means. Let's say in this particular day we use all the appliances. 
Before we even wake up, the fridge inside and outside is on 24-7. The ventilator in the bathroom is always running. The smart home hub together with some smart home appliances are running 24-7. And our internet router is always running. So let's start today. The diesel heater is on for about one hour in the morning. Our pump is running every time we use water. Nicole and I both work on a powerful laptop. I also use a second monitor when I edit. Because we've got to charge our phone at night, we do it now. When the sun's out, we turn on the dishwasher after lunch. Let's say we're really into consuming energy today, so we turn the washing machine on when the dishwasher is finished. I'll also charge some camera gear for two hours. It's time for cooking dinner. Okay, the kitchen lights are on. And we turn on the max fan for one hour. Let's turn on some cozy nights to finish the day. And that makes a total of 2,846 watts used this particular day. Was this any helpful? Let us know in the comments. Consider subscribing and see you in the next one.